are again, we're gonna make another recipe. I, we may have made this recipe once before, but we're gonna do it again because this food is a comfort food and everybody can use it. Meatloaf, we're making meatloaf. We're gonna make use of some demos that we did before and reuse them with the food processor and our mixer. And we have all our ingredients out. This is from Mrs. Glenna V. Moosey? I don't, I, it's probably Moose. Moose. Astoria, Illinois. It has um, ground beef, onions, a can of mushrooms, breadcrumbs, uh, pepper, garlic, pork, mushroom soup, four eggs, milk, salt, and seasoned salt in it. Okay. And it did call for celery salt, but we're not going to be putting that in. I like some peppers in mine, so we're going to use our food processor and we're going to throw some peppers in there too. So we're going to get started and we're going to start by chopping our vegetables in our food processor. It's just half a, I put half a pepper of all different colors just for colors. This is just a white, a large white onion. We've plugged it in, we have our lid secured, our basin is secured, and now we are going to turn it on. Um, I don't think it's liquefying it. It is. It's okay. It looks like it's liquefying because it's putting the little pieces up against the side. Just chop it up, doesn't it? We are make it, mixing it in our meatloaf, so you don't want big chunks like that. making it really liquid in it. It's pureeing it and I got it on pulse. This is, oh, I could have used the shredders too and shredded it. I wonder if we should. Yeah, it'll be okay. It'll still have the same flavor. It'll just be rather than biting into a chunk of onion, it'll be more like a no. piece. No. So now that the vegetables are done, we're going to go over and we're going to go back and use our mixer and get mixing on all of our ingredients. Okay. okay. Well, we've got our vegetables. They kind of came out a little bit pureed, but it'll still give the flavor um, that we want in it. So it has the onion. So now basically we're just going to add everything that is needed. So it calls for ground beef, two pounds. Okay, and ground pork. Okay. Put that in there. Okay, ground pork. I'm hoping that what this is going to eliminate is whenever you make meatloaf, the one thing you got to do is kind of nice sometimes to get your hands in there and get dirty. But I'm hoping this mixer is going to alleviate that, so you don't have to stick your fingers in it. Okay. So the pork, and now we need we have that onions in there. Uh, the cream of mushroom soup calls for one can of cream of mushroom soup. We did notice that one thing was missing from this recipe. The one thing that everybody puts in their meatloaf is ketchup, or they use ketchup. There's no ketchup in this recipe. Okay, and then it calls for, so there's our cream of mushroom soup. And a can, a small can of uh, mushrooms, okay. drained, no water. Okay. Okay. So, cream of mushroom soup, one can of mushrooms, four eggs, slightly beaten, which is what the, we have here. Four eggs, slightly beaten. Okay. Three cups. Of bread crumbs. Yeah, three. 
cups. Ooh, that's full. <laughs> okay, moving on. The milk. This calls for a cup of milk. Which I don't remember ever putting in any milk, but game to try anything. Uh Half a teaspoon of pepper and a teaspoon of salt. So half a teaspoon of pepper. quarter teaspoon of garlic and one teaspoon of, it says all seasoned salt. I'm going to use seasoned salt. Okay, that's this one here. Gosh, people are so afraid of garlic. <laughs> Only a quarter teaspoon of garlic. teaspoon of garlic. I like things garlic eat it. Quarter teaspoon isn't going to do this justice. <laughs> okay. Now, everything is in there. It says mix well and form into a loaf. That's all it says. So now we're going to go back to our mixer. Put that on there. Lock it in. It's We're using the paddle on this one. And now this is where your hands don't get messy. And we'll start out. And mix it up. Everything is mixed together now. Hands are still clean. Pate de foie gras. All right. So we're going to come back over here. That was the skin to the mushroom for some reason didn't mix. All right. So here's what we have. It does. It looks like a little pate right now. Yeah. It's all mixed all the way down to the bottom. So now we're going to use this to put ours in. Move it over. This isn't on. Yeah, it is. Okay. Who wants it on this camera? <laughs> All right. And we're going to put this in here. And the nice thing about this loaf pan is, again, if I don't want to, I don't have to stick my fingers in it. And again, Boom. meatloaf. It's your choice as to what you put in it. Um. You want it more like a hamburger? Put some pickles in it. This is going to be quite the loaf. The one nice thing I like is that meatloaf is good the first night, but it's even better the second. The Says second you. First. Now, the other thing, like I said, did you notice there's doesn't seem to have any tomato in this whatsoever and almost all the other recipes I read call for ketchup and tomato paste except for this one that's why we were trying this um, because technically we shouldn't have 
Are you going to be able to fit all that in there? <laughs> I'm Holy trying. Holy moly. It's, it's quite big. Good lord. This is an extra large loaf pan, too. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <sighs> well, we could always use the rest of it to patch up holes in the brick. <laughs> oh, let's see how it comes out. It might be good. You won't want to patch up any holes. All right, so it's all in here. Maybe plug a leak in the boat. <laughs> The other thing that is missing is everybody's favorite on meatloaf. Bacon! All right. It is now a loaf. Literally. <laughs> well, unlike bread, it's not going to be rising, so it's as big as it's going to be. It's not. And again, no messy hands. Now, the recipe says to put it in the oven covered with foil for an hour at 350 which by the way we preheated our oven to 350 the first thing you should always look for in the thing is what you need to preheat your oven to <laughs> so we're going to put bacon on it and because we're going to put bacon on it i'm going to leave it uncovered so we're going to get the bacon now i did put the bacon in the microwave to cook a little bit because i've found that if you don't you end up with really gross uncooked bacon. So I cooked it in the microwave just a minute, not completely. Now I'm just going to cover the top with the bacon and pop it in the oven. So I'm going to get that bacon and I'll be right back. We got our bacon out. I only cooked it only part way and like I said that's so that it doesn't come out. This is the way it would come out on your meat <laughs> when it was done. So bacon on top. That's eight slices of bacon. I cover the top. And for most recipes, the next thing you would do is put ketchup on it, but we're gonna try it without and we'll see if it gets starts to burn or anything like that. You I'll put a little put ketchup on, on top. No. Always put some on it afterwards too. Yeah. Or mustard. Well, I'm just curious as how no. Could you be never, a mustard you meat no. of. You know I mean after it's cooked. Yeah. Um why is this a hamburger? No, I don't put mustard on the hamburger either. Okay. I do. You're weird. No, I'm not. Yep. So now I turn the sides up just to catch some of the grease. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to put this on a cookie sheet. I and would. stick it in the oven <laughs> just so that I don't have to keep coming back because so we it don't got need on the to burner. Use the and... fire extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a cookie sheet. So, in the magic of our camera, we have a magic cookie sheet under our food. All right, now we're gonna pop this into the oven and it's gonna cook for an hour. Awful big, we we'll see what it happens, 350 yeah. degrees, so. I have a feeling it's gonna take longer. All right, so let's pop this in the oven that we preheated. There we go. And we're gonna set our timer and clean up our stuff. And we'll be back okay. in an hour. So our timer went off for an hour after an hour. Now, in the recipe it said to cover it and cook it for an hour and then uncover it, turn the oven down to 250, 250 and cook it for another half hour uncovered. So, we cooked it uncovered, so I'm going to check it now and see where we're at. Yeah, I don't think it's done. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's not. <laughs> yep. It's not done. Bacon's getting good though. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's not bad. What's it at? Double checking. Between 145 and 150. So it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet. You're gonna turn the heat down or are you gonna leave it at? Um, I think I'm gonna leave it. All right. Because it looks a little pale. For another, what, half hour? Half hour. We're gonna set the timer for half an hour and then hopefully it'll be done by then. So make sure you allow a lot of time <laughs> for this to cook Yeah. for dinner. And, and we'll be back. All right, so we set a timer for a half an hour and half an hour is up. We're gonna check this out. I'm hoping it's done now. Ooh, 
looks good. Ooh, the bacon looks good. Yeah. But it looks different because there's no ketchup. All right. So we're going to take this now and we're going to pan back. Hmm, interesting. According to that, it's only 144. Put it in straight from the top. You got 153. Medium rare. <laughs> but over here, I got 167. Yeah, I'm sure it's pretty much done. 195. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Okay, so it is done. It is a little different looking than I'm used to. We're gonna have to let it cool. For a bit. On, uh, yeah, I would let it sit. The cleanup was a breeze. There was hardly anything. Everything went into the dishwasher, which you can probably hear running in the background. But no big. There was no mess. I wasn't a mess. Nothing. I feel like I'm carving. I'm just using this to hold it. Probably let it set for five minutes, just like anything else. Let it rest. But I want to see what it looks like inside. Because like I said, there's no tomatoes, no nothing. I'm not used to that. And if not, we can always repair chinks in the wall outside. I don't think there's a lot of chinks. It oh is yeah, that's solid. Done. That's done. Well, that's the end. It is solid. It did cook pretty well to the bottom. I'm going to think you're wallow it's in a space toilet. <laughs> I don't think so. I'll it's a little... It still looks like tartar. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's very tasty. I can taste all the peppers, everything. that off it is hot well it did just come out of the oven oh yeah you taste the peppers and mm -hmm. everything that's yeah. good that's really good for I'm surprised I really am it's might serve up real nice too with mashed potatoes and gravy on the side that came out really good I'm new way of making meatloaf without ketchup Texture is interesting. It's very soft. Yeah. Very uh, creamy. I wonder if it's the milk. I, yeah, that, I was going to just say that. It's probably the milk that does that. No, no, no. It's pretty good. It's very good. It Sorry. did good, and it'll probably be even better tomorrow in a sandwich. Meatloaf always is. I don't know why. It's always good the second day, cold or hot. Mac and cheese on the side with this would be good too. Kids might like that. It doesn't really taste like a hamburger. I mean, no. it's a little bit different. Okay. This was a piece of cake. We used our new new toys. Well, and that's the new toy. This is the new toy. The other one was the old Everything, toy. Like I said, this was so easy. Don't you take all that bacon. I want a piece of bacon. <laughs> He's trying to steal the bacon off of it instead of eating the meat. I want bacon. Who cares about bacon? Ow. <laughs> ah. Anyway, while we fight over the bacon, which is why you have to put a lot of bacon on it. <laughs> I got me a piece. <laughs> As the saying goes, if I can make it, so can you. And cut. <laughs>